locate and identify. Uh, there's just a flood of new questions, and everything has gotten more complicated. So in a way, uh, the universe is so large, it seems to constantly run away from us. Do you, think, do you think language is a so, barrier? Our language is a barrier to understand. Language? Yeah. Well, um, I think, you know, we reinvent language. We, uh, our spoken language didn't quite work when we invented mathematics, uh, uh, et cetera, et cetera. I think that we, we have to str struggle to overcome our language at the same time we're struggling to, to uh, find out more. But uh, your original question, are there limits to what the human mind can know? Of course I can. I can not know that. But what I do know is that uh, the, the, that which is unknown seems to be greater today than it was in Galileo's time. Thank you. Yes, sir. Historically speaking, your golden age, the use of imagination when you're isolated makes great sense. But it seems to me like many of the developments happened because those minds were communicating with each other. Today, yep. we've opened virtually unlimited channels for that kind of communication. And I wonder if you see us as more imaginative now than we were then. Granted, a larger population and differences, but do we have the ability to still have that imaginative side? Yeah. Well, yes. No to your first question, yes to your second one. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I don't see us as more imaginative. I, uh, and the second question was... Uh, Are we, with all of our social media, our communication, our ability to pass ideas so many different ways now, are we at a point where we're passing so much information that we've taken that imaginative streak out? Or I, I hope not. Uh, there are a couple of things. Uh, one of the components of, of uh, abstract thinking is spatial, uh, spatial relations. Now, everything is presented to us on a two-dimensional screen. And all of the recreation that we have to do in our minds is done for us on a two-dimensional screen. I think that our three-dimensional visualization is seriously being uh, atrophied by that. Of course, our ability to work the algorithms of arithmetic is seriously being atrophied by the existence of calculators. Uh, and my question is, what has been given to us in exchange? Plato was distraught at the way in which all this writing was destroying the verbal uh, traditions that he believed so strongly in. Uh, always something replaces. So, so, if I can quote what I quoted for this gentleman again, the tree of man is never quiet. You know, there's, there's always something uh, that comes in to replace I, I think that, uh, I don't think we're less imaginative people. I think that imagination is, is uh, suddenly, look, for a long time education was about transmitting information. Now, transmitting information is, is, is done. I mean, you push a button. When was the War of 1812? Push a button, there it is. Uh, it's, it's no longer it's no longer valuable to transmit information. So, what is learning at this point? Well, I've said before that memorization, I think, is important. We've got to have junk up here, or we can't do creative thinking. Uh, but I think we are stacking up junk. And uh, so, I think it's a, it's a puzzling situation where replacement is going on under our nose and we don't know how it's coming out. Uh, thank you for the talk, Dr. Lee Hart. Uh, two questions. First one is, what, how did you come up with, as far as your shell bells, the uh, um, engines, the engineering?
continuity. How do you, those topics come up as there's over you know, 2,000 or so? Um, and, as for, and the last the other question is, what was the reason why you even started going in from mechanical engineering into basically your history program? Uh, I suppose the answer to the second question is curiosity. I just found this uh, domain of interesting stuff and I wanted to pursue it. I uh, read more, found out more, and it meant that I had to learn more. And it got <laughs> interestinger and interestinger. <coughs> interestinger. Uh, as, as for finding ideas for the show, that is a cakewalk. There are so many more ideas floating around there than you ever have time to write. It's a matter of looking through what's there and saying, can I spin this? That, that's what, what's involved. Uh, there's no shortage. The tree of man. <laughs> I, I have a follow-up question before. So you said, that, oh sorry, Francesca. Well, just say, we'll catch you up. He's doing a follow-up, so that's okay. a uh, You said before that you know, people have these ideas and become inventions. Are inventions always good? I mean, no. Do, be, okay. <laughs> Every invention brings trouble. There is no invention that has ever been invented that doesn't have revenge effects. <laughs> and, you know, think of that. Television, automobiles. Look how many people have killed in automobiles. Look what automobiles have done to reshape our society for good and bad. Name an invention, there's a revenge effect. So if I think about something, about an invention, yes. should I think at a moral question of should I bring that invention to the world? Is it going to be good? Is it going to be bad? Or is it just I just should do it because I had it? I think you should think that way, yeah. I think that... that uh, some inventions are, are, it's pretty hard to find the, uh, well, you, you've got to look at your own moral compass and say, would I want to be responsible for this? Look at your own moral compass, would I want to be responsible for this? And if the answer is no, then you don't do it for hire. It seems like a pretty tall task to imagine what the ripple effects might be. That's right. You can't. And whatever you invent will have revenge effects. Live with it, you know. <laughs> uh, we we can't we can't have clothes, warmth, lights, audio, university. You can't have any of that stuff without invention. Uh, and so the hope is that the the good will outweigh the revenge effect, right? And that's the hope, right? What? That's the hope. That's the hope. <laughs> Here. No, no, I, I wanted to ask the same question. Where's it going? Here. I just wanted to more so thank you than a question uh, for the years of the engines and the ingenuity. Entirely welcome. <laughs> It's really nice to hear your voice in person. That was <laughs> uh, but um, the question I have is, and where engines actually goes beyond, and I think people have also made comments about what's out there on the, I'm going to say internet, uh, communication of ideas. Uh, but what are, are you seeing, it, what is the solution to the pseudoscience that's being put out there by the 10 o'clock, by the 6 o'clock news and the 10 o'clock news where younger people, we've got, I, I'm, an, I'm 50 and I've got engineers that work for me that are 20 years old. They're great minds. They're much smarter than I am, a lot more exposure. But the general public that doesn't have an engineering degree, doesn't have a, a, a degree in a, I don't even like the term science. Uh, they're biologists, they're engineers. Science is, I don't even like that term, but the, where, what is the solution to getting 
people pass the pseudoscience that's being put across by the 10 o'clock news, the 6 o'clock news. I was invited here tonight to answer one of the huge imponderable questions, and I sort of muddled around with it. Now you come along with <laughs> another huge unanswerable question, if I could answer that. <laughs> oh boy. The stuff, the stuff that I see, I, I'm constantly getting... I come to the point where I, I shrink from articles on science because it, it's always a fight. I get an article on science and there's something wrong here, there's something wrong there. Uh, I, don't know. I, I guess that I'm going I'm to follow up with a request of those people, the rest of the people in the room, is as you get your degrees, as you get your ed education, you're younger than me, you're going to be changing the world. I'm just finishing up my, you know, I've got 10 more years of work and I'm just finishing up. Take the time to challenge what's out there and be vocal about it. Just because someone else, just because grants are being written to prove political agendas, doesn't mean you can't speak out again against those <coughs> things that aren't correct. Yep. yep. Thank you. Thank you. Announcements to make. First of all, I want to thank you so much for a wonderful presentation. curiosity that you have, you know, all through and through, even the way you handle the audience here, the way you're taking questions, the way you're really open to just about everything, that's what really struck us. And I think that's what also awakens in everybody around us, that innate sense of curiosity, because we're all curious, we all have that desire to know. And it's really in front of a teacher like yourself that that, that desire is reawakened in us. So I really want to thank you for that opportunity to, to give us that, to teach us and to reawaken something that is beautiful in us too. Thank you. Well, we warmly thank uh, the University of Houston Cullen College of Engineering, Department of Mechanical Engineering, the University of St. Thomas, Department of Mathematics, Computer Science, and Cooperative Engineering, and the University of St. Thomas, uh, Office of Academic Affairs, and all of you present here. If you're interested in the work of Crossroads, please leave your business card or register at your name at the information desk outside of the sanatorium, where you will find additional information about Crossroads and our work. Our next event, American Protestant Theology, presentation of Father Giussani's book, with Professor Archibald Spencer, Associate Professor of Theology at Northwest Baptist Theological Seminary in Canada, February 21st at 6.30 p.m. here at the University of St. Thomas. If you have enjoyed this event, I would like to encourage you to make a financial contribution to the work of Crossroads Houston. You will find a donation box at the reception desk outside, outside of the sanatorium, where you're also all welcome to join us for some minor refreshments. Thank you all, and good night.